So MBM recently got updated for the first time in over a year. It's not much, but it does prove that whatever janitor has been given the reins of fixing this game, they do see Man vs. Machine as an area worth improving. And considering the premise of my channel, I'm inclined to agree with that. Now, this video won't be going over anything too extreme. As much as I'd like to champion a brand new tour, or the creation of a shitload of unique upgrades out of thin air, those are some borderline official update tier changes, and I don't see a world where these are included alongside standard bug fixes. Instead, we're going to be focusing on tiny, incremental changes that can likely be implemented through a few lines of code. Though, don't test my expertise on that one, I know jack shit. At long last, we've finally been given an inch, so let's try and take a mile. Alright, let's start off by talking about a surprisingly unintuitive feature, queuing into games themselves. First of all, casual and competitive both have this menu that allows for the exclusion of servers that cause high ping. MVM doesn't have this, and it definitely should. I don't care what hour of the day it is, I don't want to be matched onto a server from Singapore. This change would inevitably lead to longer queue times during less populated hours, which is why I propose a coinciding change. Let people queue for multiple tours at once. As of right now, you're limited to the missions contained within one specific tour. This works fine if you have a blank slate on two cities, but if you're only looking for one particular mission on a lesser queued tour, be prepared for longer wait times than the rides at Disney World. A change like this would allow for more groups to be filled across different tours, rather than being force funneled into two cities because of long wait times and dice roll server locations. And while we're on the topic of queuing, please fix this UI bug. Sometimes the mode menu will overlap with the tour selector, making you unable to select the specific tours that you want to play. Oh, and one last thing, it's still possible for kicked players to rejoin the matches that they were booted from, a bug that has acted as a lightning rod for some of MBM's most toxic behavior. If removing teammate inspection was done on the altar of lessening toxicity, this is a no-brainer and should definitely be a high priority. Now into the game mode itself, we're gonna knock out a couple wacky visual bugs before getting into some of the more meaty problems. On Rottenberg, there is an extremely common issue where this barrier will appear invisible. Sometimes, small robots will appear as giants and or hold out weapons that they aren't designed to use. When buying from the upgrade station, you'll occasionally get booted out for seemingly random reasons. And lastly, although incredibly minor, at the end of Empire Wave 3, the robot screen shows three giant soldiers alongside 15 medics, when actually, there are 18 medics, not 15. And with those petty hassles out of the way, let's talk about the more egregious offenders. Starting off with upgrades, and boy is there a lot to talk about here. Burn time doesn't work. The second tick of minigun firing speed doesn't work. Unless you're using the Tomislav, in which case the first tick doesn't work. The second tick of sentry firing speed only sometimes works with the Wrangler, and the third tick never works at all. The Huntsman's damage upgrade only increases it by around 15% instead of the stated 25. Also, the arc of the Huntsman's arrow doesn't scale with the reload speed upgrade. And on top of that, with the projectile penetration upgrade, the arrows will literally break inside of you while you're ubered. Knockback Rage makes you do 50% less damage and the description makes no mention of it. The Soda Popper, and indeed a surprising amount of other weapons, are able to Ghost Upgrade, i.e. buy upgrades that the weapons don't normally possess. Finally, and I know I'm gonna get in a lot of trouble for saying this, but there was recently discovered to be an infinite money glitch. Applicable on Valve servers, by the way. Look, if I didn't mention it, Delphi would have eventually. Needless to say, there are a lot of unintentional bugs that have been in the game for years, and all of them, especially that last one, really need to be removed. One of the most laughable arguments concerning Man vs. Machine is the idea that because you're fighting AI and not human opponents, the balance of the game mode doesn't matter. This notion would get you laughed out of the room when applied to any PvE game on the planet, but for some reason, because MVM comes bundled with a roulette wheel, the very concept of meaningful gameplay is kicked to the curb in the name of expedited loot. I personally disagree with that, as there are many skewed risk-reward ratios that affect both sides of the distribution, 
situation, and we should work to rectify both. That's the key thing to note here. I'm not in favor of buffing or nerfing weapons based solely on how good or bad they are, but rather tuning down the mechanics that make for polarizing or over-centralized gameplay. It's for this reason that I believe weapons like the Beggar's Bazooka, Widowmaker, Soda Popper, and maneuvers such as Flog Cancelling or the Immobile, Rapid Firing Airstrike Soldier aren't really things we need to be concerned about. Other weapons, not so much. Starting off with the Gas Passer, nerf the damage or charge time. I don't really care which one. Make it do only 50 damage and keep the same generation speed, or maintain the same damage output but have it take like 8 times as long to fully charge it. A better solution would be to integrate more than one level of the upgrade and adjust variables accordingly, but I'm not certain how effortless it would be to implement that, so I'd rather opt for a quick and easy solution. Next up, the Heat Maker. On any robot intensive wave, you pretty much never have to unscope the rifle, which provides an enormous damage increase that none of the sniper's other primaries can even come close to accomplishing. This weapon only needs 3 headshot kills or 9 assisted kills in order to fully charge the rifle. A laughable number when you consider how many robots are usually on the field. Personally, I'd like to see this ratio multiplied by 3, needing 9 headshot kills or 27 assisted kills to fully charge the meter. It may sound harsh, but in the context of MVM, that's getting off easy. Also on the chopping block is the Scottish Resistance. The ability for a clump of crit stickies to one-shot every non-boss robot in the game is a little too strong, especially on the later waves where the jacked up reload speed can compensate for one's ignorance of the wave's robot patterns. To be honest, I don't really have a good idea on what to change, as something like a damage cap would be easily circumvented. But we do need something in place so that your teammates can actually, you know, play the game. Following that, we have the Uber Saw. Now, in the vast majority of cases, this weapon follows a relatively fair risk-to-reward ratio. Going in for a swing on a robot that can target and potentially kill you, especially on the early waves, is a pretty ballsy move. But that's kind of predicated on the robots actually having some firepower, something that doesn't really apply to Sentry Busters. This makes them more of a blessing than a curse, which I heavily doubt was the intended effect. Farming a full uber charge off a non-hostile robot is very clearly over the line, so I think making the busters immune to the on-hit effects of the uber saw is a pretty warranted change. And for the last weapon-specific nerf, the Wrangler is fucking absurd. The shield given to the sentry gun is already broken enough, but Valve made the incredibly intelligent decision to make it stack with the building health upgrade. This means that under the effects of the Wrangler, your crit immune, double firing speed, body blocking sentry has nearly 2600 health around 1700 of it being provided by the Wrangler's shield. This is way too tanky for a turret that has that many benefits. Again, the fix here is obvious. Bring the Wrangler's damage mitigation down to its base 432 added HP, regardless of the building health upgrade. This would cut a max building health sentry survivability nearly in half, but even then, that's perfectly sufficient for most encounters. And that's it for the weapon specific nerfs, but there are still a few general broken mechanics that we need to patch up. For one, giants need to once again be resistant to air blast. This was standard for all of MBM's existence before Jungle Inferno broke the effect. So now giants are able to be cheesed on a routine basis through either air blast spam or rapid fire scorch shotting. Even ignoring the endless griefing potential, this does nothing but make it a one man game and it's exceptionally boring for everybody involved. Another obvious fix is adding Navigation Mesh to Big Rock's Big Rock. As it stands right now, 4 out of 6 players can quite literally go AFK as long as you have a sniper that's shit hot at clicking on heads. Quite frankly, that's overkill, regardless of how good any individual player is at the game. And lastly, please let us type while being revived. Nothing's worse than wanting to communicate during downtime and either having to backspace the entire message in the middle of a fight, or dropping some unfinished gibberish into the chat just to get quicker access to your movement keys. This is really annoying. Those are the most common issues I've encountered, but there's still a whole new side to this coin. The issues that never regularly manifest themselves because there's no reason to. Of course, I'm referring to the needless bottlenecking of already subpar weapons. 
For starters, why do shotguns, pistols, revolvers, throwables, melees, and even the fucking bison not have a damage upgrade? This is one that's always confused me, and the absurdity of this limitation becomes more and more laughable as the influx of broken weapons grew ever more prominent. Did Valve think that including it would prompt an army of fat scouts to start invading every mission? Because, uh, it wouldn't. All adding damage upgrades would do is slightly lessen the gap between the weak and the strong. A meta change occurring as a result of this is very unlikely, if not impossible. But those aren't the only quarrels I have. Why does the Sandman get a Mark for Death upgrade but the Rap Assassin is left in the dirt? Why can't the Holiday Punch make small robots laugh? Why does the Huntsman not have explosive headshot? Why doesn't the Babyface's blaster stack with the movement speed upgrades? Why does the Bear Heavy not get crit on kill like the Demo Knight swords? Why doesn't Dispose Sentry have multiple ticks with the Gunslinger at least? None of these changes would make these weapons overpowered or anywhere close to the meta, so why leave them out? I'm not even asking for super complex, newly generated upgrades like a Time Bomb Sapper or an Explosive Market Gardener. I just think that some baseline Control c Control Ving of the upgrades that we already have would make playing the unoptimized loadouts far more enjoyable. It's such an easy fix and almost a decade late, I think it's about time we solve this issue. And that's it for the less complicated changes that I would like to see acted upon. If I missed anything obvious, which I probably did, be sure to let me know in the comments below. I know topics like refunding upgrades, inspecting teammates, and the multitude of issues regarding the spy are all common and valid conversations to be had, but they open the door for far more nuance when discussing their implementation, so I don't think they fit the easy fixes premise of this video. But don't worry, I plan to make more long form videos on all three of those topics in the future, so we can address them then. Anyways, if you want to see more content like this, be sure to drop a sub, if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a like, follow me on Twitter for the occasional shit posts and join the Discord in the description if you want to come chat with the community. That's all I got guys. Thank you so much for watching the video. See ya.